Okay, good morning. So, I hope buhay na kayo or buhay na ang gising diwa nyo after nyong makitang sumayaw na matega sa mga classmates nyo. So, okay. Welcome to the course uh, Unit 3, Part 2, the First Responders Team. So, at the end of this module, students are expected to understand the different types of investigation. Also, to know and familiarize the roles of the first responder as it's the first crucial in the success of investigation know the general uh, composition of investigation team and understand their roles know and understand in different tools and in criminal investigation so types of investigation Ito, various types of investigative activities are performed by criminal justice and protective services personnel. There is a substantial growth in the conduct of background investigation. One aspect, yung BIN na background, okay? Background investigation. One aspect of this is the increasing requirement for employees to be investigated before they are hired. So, another type of investigation kasi yung tinatawag natin background investigation. For example, kayo mag apply sa tribuno, PNP, BGMP, or... BFP, okay, sa mga ganyan. Sa anumang uh, law enforcement. Ang nangyayari dyan, bago kayo makapasok, okay, bago kayo maka... Pag nag-apply kayo dyan sa mga ganyan, nagkakaroon ng background investigation. So, hindi agad-agad, uh, nagseselect lang sila based on your qualities, based on your uh, anong pinakita sa kanila. Usually, kapag nagpa-final deliberation na sila, na ba background investigation mo yan, pupunta yan sa mga bahay-bahay nyo, secret lang. Sa so, ipagtatanong kayo, sino kayo, ganyan. There is always a background in for, um, investigation. So again, we have criminal investigation. As we all know, criminal investigation is generally the function of law enforcement agency. Siyempre, yan talagang ginagawa natin. So this occurs when a felony offense or misdemeanor was committed. Kailan ba natin ginagawa ang investigation? When, they, when there is an existence of a existence of a crime such as felony offense or misdemeanor so since the purpose of this is investigation to prove or the guilt of the suspect prosecutors must have to prove their guilt beyond reasonable doubt so that is criminal investigation kailan lang tayo nagkakaroon ng criminal investigation when there is a existence of a crime nakakasunod po ba o masyadong mabilis nakakasunod naman Yes, ma'am. Okay. Accident investigation. So, one of the criminal invest type of criminal investigation is the accident investigation. So, what is accident investigation? Yun yung mga nakita nyo sa daan. Okay. It is the process of determining the root causes of accidents on job inquiries, property damage, dam and make recommendation in order to prevent the same incident from recurring. So, insurance companies also conduct this type of investigations in order to determine if the circumstances is covered by the uh, policy. Okay. Ang accident investigation, it will not rely or it will not just only stop dun sa tinatawag nating traffic accident investigations. We have different types of accidents. For example, for example accidentally napindot ang fire alarm, tapos biglang sumabog ang isang ganito ganyan. So, any type ng isang insidente na nangyari wherein may merong um, damage of property or loss of property or even loss of lives or even physical injuries na hindi naman sinasadya, ang tawag doon ay accident uh, investigation. So, sabi nga niya, insurance company also conduct this type of investigation. ba Lalo na doon sa mga... Uh, Kaya nga, di ba, mayroong fire building inspection, ganyan. Next. Okay. Human resources or personal investigation. This is conducted by the HRD. Di ba? When an employee is reported to have violated the policy of the company, the violation may or may not involve a criminal or civil investigation. So, for example, sa mga company naman or sa mga pinagtatrabahuhan nyo, so lahat naman ng mga company or saan man kayo nagtatrabaho, meron silang HR na tinatawag. Sila yung mga nag, uh, nag-check, sila yung gumagawa ng payroll nyo, sila yung nag-check ng ganyan, sila din ang nag-investigate when uh, whenever na merong nag-violate ng uh, rules nila sa company. So, kapag nagkaroon ng violation within the rules of the company, therefore, ayan, uh, magkakaroon ng investigation ang ating HR to validate and to know what are the circumstances or what will be the consequences na ibibigay doon sa 
employee nila. Also, we have this nga yung kanina yung tinatawag kong background investigation. It is the process of checking the history of a person before they will be assigned in any sensitive position or before they will be employed. So, yun nga, katulad ng BNP, BFP, BGMP, pag nag a apply kayo dyan, hindi kayo agad-agad na-approve. Kaya nga din, di ba, kapag sa resume nyo, meron kayong character reference. So, one one part yun ng background investigation, tatawagan nila yung mga character reference na yun. Just only to, to, val to validate yung sinabi mo, if totoo ba. Okay? So, the purpose of background investigation is to determine the loyalty and integrity of the person before they will employ it. Okay? Bago nila hire yun, syempre, lalo na sa kapulisan, eh kung kanwari may nag-apply na ganito, member pala siya ng NPA. Eh kaya pala siya nag apply eh para lang maging... Uh, maging asset siya ng mga NPA. So, ang nangyayari, talagang nagba-background check muna sila. Next. Intelligence investigation. So, what is intelligence investigation? This is designed to gather information about the illegal activities of a group. This type of this type is sometimes referred as the proactive investigation. Ito naman yung katulad na to nung uh, police operations. Okay, kasama to sa police operations. Yung kahapon natin, di ba, example ng police operation is yung raid. So, ito naman, itong intelligence investigation, kasama, kamukha din ng ating police operations, but it is a proactive investigation. Ma'am, pag sinabi yung proactive, what does it mean? Ibig sabihin, bago sila mag-raid or bago sila mag-conduct ng raid, ito yung minamanmanan muna nila lahat. For example, yung ating mga, tawag dito, minamanmanan uh, muna nila lahat yung... Uh, sa tingin nilang legal activities ng isang mga grupo. Wait lang ha. Nasaan yung aking... Di pala tayo nag-ano, nag-picture ng ating ano. Yan, nag-screenshot ako. Okay. Okay na tayo sa intelligence investigation. So, do you have any uh, questions about uh, regarding of different types of criminal investigation? Malinaw naman na. Are you sure? Okay? So, ito na. The role of the first responder. So, sino ba yung mga first responder na yan? So, the role of the first responder, regardless of rank, are all the same. Okay? Kahit pa sabihin mong patrolman ka, kahit sabihin mong pinaka-chief ka, or kahit sabihin mong barangay captain ka lang, or barangay tanod. So, the role of the first responders, regardless of rank, are all the same. Officers who first arrive at the scene must have to be familiar with their duties and responsibility and to execute them to the best of their abilities. So, regardless of your uh, ranks, regardless of your ages, or, ano, or so whatever, basta ang um, Role of first responder is uh, dapat alam mo yan kasi ikaw ang kauna-unahang pumunta dun sa crime scene. So, ganito. Since crime scene is dynamic, when we say dynamic, uh, paiba-iba, diba? the officer who, are, who first arrived at the scene is concerned with countless details and to the great extent, the success of the investigation and the chance for successful resolution of the case is dependent on the action and steps by the first officers to arrive at the crime scene. So, tingnan nyo, isang factor na uh, magkakaroon tayo ng successful investigation if tama din yung ginawa ng first responder. Diba? So, the initial responding officers, yun ang tawag natin, first responder, at the scene must produce a clear, concise, documented information encompassing his or her observations and actions. So, this documentation is, val is vital in providing information to substantiate investigative consideration. Malaki kasi ang role ng ano, uh, first responder sa crime scene. Ho. For example, oh, si Palele, si Princess Palele, biglang na-accidente si Maritaris Makabante. Ngayon, si Maritaris Makabante pala is parang nabalian ng buto. So, itong si first responder natin, si Princess Palele, ang ginawa niya agad is pinaggagalaw-galaw niya si Makabante. It, uh, it means parang lalo lang uh, naging worse yung senaryo ni Meritaris Makabante. So, parang sabi nga natin, pwede rin, for example, oh, si Princess Palele, first responder natin siya dun sa isang uh, uh, merong nangyari parang pagsabog o sabi natin bombing. 
Siya yung first responder, siya nakita doon. Eh tapos pumunta siya agad sa crime scene. Tapos ang ginawa niya is pinagtatanggal-tanggal niya yung mga parts ng kung ano man ang nakita niya agad-agad. So what will happen? Yung mga mag investigate noon, medyo pwedeng malito na sila. Anong nangyari? ba? Diba? Kaya nga sabi niya, uh, the successful of uh, the success of the investigation is uh, nasa key din ng isang first responder. Lalo na, 'di ba? Kasi uh, sinisecure natin ang crime scene. 'Di ba? So the role of the first responder, excuse me. <coughs> The role of the first responder, regardless of rank, are all the same. So, officer who first arrive at the scene must have to be familiar with their duties and responsibles, responsibilities to execute them to the best of their abilities. So, ang tanong, sino po ba yung mga first responder, ma'am? Kailangan po ba pulis agad? Sino mga kinoconsider dating first responder? So, first responders, ay, there are those who are charged with the responsibility of responding to emergency situations such as, but not limited to accident, homicide, fire, or emergency medical services, patrol officers, fire officers. Again, ang mga first responders natin is, Yan, usually, yung mga emergency units natin, yung mga natatawag natin emergency units. Pero kayo din, as a criminal student or as a normal uh, member of the society, you can be also a first responder. Okay po? Next. So, why is it necessary for the first responder to arrive at the scene at the soonest possible time? Bakit kaya kailangan agad-agad itong first responder eh makapunta siya dun sa emergency or crime scene as soon as possible. So, when an officer was notified, for example, ha, meron, natawagan na siya na merong emergency nga to, either through call or through the departmental notification, they proceed to the scene as rapidly and safely as possible as the circumstances permit. The faster the first responders arrives at the scene increases the probability of arrest at the scene. So, bakit? Kasi, di ba, For example, ba ito ang uh, sinaksak naman si Kalilong. O, oh, sinaksak si Kalilong. Ngayon, okay, sa pagkasaksak sa kanya, uh, habang masaksak siya, tumakbo na yung, ano, uh, yung magnanakaw. For example, nagnanakaw pa siya. Tapos nakatawag siya. Uh, may nagnanakaw po sa amin. Tapos uh, nasaksak na po ako. If, kanwari, mabagal yung first responder, baka hindi nga naabutan na buhay pa si Kalilong eh. ba? Diba? Kasi nasaksak na siya. Pero kung mabalis si first responder, buhay pa si Kalilong, tapos nagnanakaw pa yung ano, perpetrator, what will happen? There is a probability na mahuli pa niya yung nagnanakaw and also pwede pa niyang masave ang buhay ni Kalilong. So, ganun ang uh, dahilan kung bakit as soon as possible, when you, you, when you are notified with this uh, type of emergency, so yung mga officers natin is agad-agad nang pumupunta. So, the importance of arise, arriving at the crime scene rapidly are as follows. Sabi niya, the suspect may still be or near at the scene. Pwedeng naskasa, nandun pa sa crime scene or baka malapit lang siya doon sa vicinity ng crime scene. Injured persons may need emergency care. Katulad nga na example ko kanina. Witnesses may still be at the scene. Yung mga witness, pwedeng maal alam nila, nandun pa sila. Or a dying person may have a confession or other pertinent information to provide. For example, medyo na lead siyang pumunta kay Nakalilong kasi si Kalilong sa bundok pa pala nakatira. Nag-akit-akit muna ng bundok itong officer natin. So, maghihinalo na siya doon. So, at least abutan na niya kahit nangihinula na si Kalilong. ba diba? Kaya mo ba yun, Kalilong? So, a weather condition may change or destroy evidence. Ito pa. For example, ang crime scene natin is naka, nangyari siya sa open area, such as yung sa road, ganyan. O what if yung road na yon eh biglang umulan doon, ba diba? Masisira na yung ating crime scene. Therefore, we cannot conduct the proper investigation kasi nasira yun na yung mga evidences mo. So, last one, someone may attempt to alter the crime scene. Also, for example, oh, kung matagal pumunta si uh, yung first responder, baka yung ating, ang ating uh, tawag dito, ang ating perpetrator, eh, ibahin niya yung mga ebidensya. Hindi naman yun sa ebidensya, ginawa niya, nililis lang niya, ganyan. So, the responsibilities of the first responder. Ano ba yung responsibility mo as a first responder? Tingnan nyo, ha? 
So, upon receipt of the call, dispatch information, the officer should take note of the following. Ito, the type of call. Ano ba yung type of call na nareceive mo? Identity of the complainant or caller. Sino yung tumawag sa'yo? Anong oras also? The weather condition, the place of the incident, and the persons involved. Other information that are considered crucial. Lahat ng nireport sa'yo, anong oras, anong weather, sino, si karino mo tinanggap yan, kailangan yan, itatake note mo yan kapag nakareceive ka ng call. So, responsibilities of the first responder, while on the way to the scene, the officer should, habang papunta daw sa dun sa pinaka-crime scene or pinaka-emergency scene, take note of any persons or vehicles leaving the scene or where the incident incident took place. Pagkarating mo doon, habang papunta ka na doon, so, karating mo doon, kailangan mong i-take note kung sino yung nakita mo at that scene. Kasi malay mo, nandun pala ang perpetrator. Diba? And then, ano pa ba? Another, upon arrival naman at the scene, police officer should scan the scene, assess the area, Take note of the presence of individuals or vehicles in the scene that might be related to the incident. Remain alert and attentive and assume that crime is still ongoing. So, before proceeding any further, make initial observations, smell, hear, touch to, hear safe, to ensure safety. So, treat the area as crime scene unless proven otherwise. So, syempre, lahat ng area, hanggat wala pa namang, uh, di mo naman masabi kung crime scene agad dyan or what. For example, uh, meron ka lang nakita na duguan na babae, wala naman sinabi kung sinaksak siya or merong gumawa sa kanya noon. So, itreat mo lahat yon as a uh, crime scene para wala tayong nasisirang evidence, wala tayo uh, nasecure natin yung pinaka-place. So, safety procedures. So, safety procedures are the control of physical threats that will ensure the safety of officers and others who are present in the area. When at the scene, okay, the, op the police officer should what? Survey the scene. Anong gagawin niya? Smell, hear, touch to ensure safety. If dangerous persons or situation is present, ang gagawin mo muna is just to neutralize and control the situation before proceeding any further. Notify and call for backup necessary. Kanwari, a dangerous person, uh, ano yan, applicable yan kapag mga hot uh, hostage situations. Diba? Or for example, meron something uh, derailed person doon sa crime scene. Diba? Or, kanwari, may nagahawak ng bomba or merong nagahawak ng barrel dun sa mismong crime scene. So, in approaching the area, it should be in a manner that it would minimize the harm and ensure the safety of the victims as much as possible, suspects or anyone in the vicinity. Emergency care. Ito. Assisting, guiding, and instructing medical personnel of... Uh, During the care and removal of injured persons will diminish the risk of contamination and loss of evidence. So, for example, ayan, after the dangerous persons or situations were put under control, the next consideration of the responder is to ensure that medical, at medical, yan, ah, me medical attention is provided to those in need. Number one, the first responder assess if there is a sign of life. Siyempre, di ba, na-explain ko na yun kahapon, di ba? Anong uunahin mo? Secure the crime scene o yung taong nag uh, naghihinalo? Sige nga. Anong uunahin natin kapag uh, ganon? Yung tao. Man. Yung tao. Siyempre, ang tao pa rin, uh, yung tao pa rin ang pinaka-best evidence, di ba, na magkakaroon tayo. So, the first responder assess if there is a sign of life and determine if injured needs immediate medical attention. Call EMS, ibig sabihin, uh, emergency medical um, uh, sa mga uh, security natin, ganyan. Guide EMS, okay, to the victim to minimize contamination and Instruct EMS personnel not to clean up the scene and to avoid removal or alteration of items. So, kapag dumating na yung medical team na yan, okay, for uh, emergency assistance, kailangan i-assist mo din sila na kung paano kukuhanin yung injured person na yon or yung victim natin. Also, we need to instruct those EMS na not to clean up the scene. Baka nga kinuha nila yung mismo uh, biktima. Tapos nilinis naman nila yung mga uh, splatter ng dugo. ba diba? Yung mga ganyan. So, ibig sabihin, ang mangyari nun, eh, siyempre, nasira na yung evidence natin. 
Diba? So, ang gagawin lang kasi dapat ng mga emergency medical team na yan is just to get the injured person and not um, totally cleaning the scene. Kasi pag ginawa nila yan, baka yung possible evidence that would locate to, uh, to the perpetrator eh mawala. Okay po. So, emergency care again. So, point to EMS personnel that the pieces of evidences and instruct them to minimize contact with such evidence. Document the movements of persons or items by the EMS. So, isabihin nyo sa kanila na huwag gagalawin ito. As much as possible, i-preserve natin itong uh, crime scene na to. Kasi nga, ang kukunin mo lang dapat yung tao. Kasi nga, baka masira po yung mga evidences doon. So, if there is a possibility that victim will die, get the dying declaration. Ano yung dying declaration? No? Katulad ng example ko kanina, naghihinalo na si Kalilong. So, pag naghihinalo na si Kalilong, ganyan, kapag, kanwari, malaki yung possibility, yung tipong nagsusuka-suka na ng dugo si Kalilong, pero gusto kaya pa niyang magsalita. Di ba, may mga ganyan yung mga napapanood nyo sa mga ano, movies? Totoo yun. Di ba? Yung kanwari, mamamatay na ako, hindi ko na kaya. Tapos meron silang last final word na sasabihin or sometimes ang gagawin nila, hindi mas, if hindi man sila makapagsalita, eh, susulat sila through their blood. Di ba? Nay, nanonood ba kayo yung mga crime scene movies? Ako kasi may ilig ako manood sa mga ganun, yung mga investigative na ano. Tapos ang gagawin nila, Diba? Yung, yung pinakasikat na ginagawa ng mga victim pag mamamatay na sila, kukuha sila ng dugo nila. And then, magsusunod sila kung saan sila naka, ano, naka, nakahimlay. So, kanwari, tinatanong siya, sinong gumawa nito sa'yo? Ganyan, ganyan. Ang gagawin niya, magsusulat na lang siya ng dugo niya. So, minsan, initial na lang isusulat nila. Tapos, yung initial na yon yun yung magiging parang, ano nila, uh, link, diba? Uh, uh, trace evidence para malaman as, ano, uh, kung sino ba yung gumawa nun sa kanya. So, yung tinatawag natin yung pagbigay niya ng initials na yun, that is a form of dying declaration. Diba? That is dying declaration. Parang nga sa last will testament niya. Ano, diba? Bago siya mamatay, yun ang sinabi niya. So, kung hindi man siya makapagsalita, pwede yung ganun. Still, it is a dying declaration. Next, if in the event, diba? if in the event that EMS personnel arrive at the scene prior to the police, Okay, the police should get the name of the personnel who responded, the contact information, and to which the hospital, the victim, or injured were taken. For example, mas nauna yung EMS kesa dun sa police as a first responder na kakuha. So, ang gagawin ng police as an investigator, di ba, if nanonood kayo ng mga, nanonood naman ba kayo ng mga Korean na telenovela na, ano, yung mga doctors, ganyan. So, I'm also a fan of ganun, mga, mga, mga okay, ganun, ng, ng mga ganong uh, Korean novela. Di ba? Ang gagaling nila. So, ano nangyayari? Di ba kapag naunang nag-respond ang mga nurse or yung mga emergency medical teams, pupuntahan sila ng mga polis. Bakit? Tatanungin niya saan niya nakita itong victim, sinong, naki, ah, sinong nakita niyang kasama niya, sinong nag-report sa kanya. So, kailangan kasing kuhanin mo yung information na yun galing from that uh, medical team para, syempre, dun mo malolocate kung saan nagsimula, anong nangyari, since hindi ikaw yung naging first responder. Parang ganun din nangyari sa inyo. For example, kayo, kayo yung unang nakakita ng crime, kayo yung nag-report ng crime, kayo yung witness, anong gagawin ng ano, police pagkarating niya doon? Kakausapin ka niya. Tatanungin ka niya, anong nakita mo, saan nangyari yan, at kailan nangyari yan. Diba? Ganun siya. So, next, ito, First responder should, okay, before I continue, do you have any questions? Baka nabibilisan kayo or so whatever. Kaya pa naman, carry pa naman. Hi. Hello. Kaya pa, Hello. Kaya pa. Sige, sige. Hello. Okay. Kaya pa, ma'am. Sige, kaya pa yan kapag niya nag-exam, ewan ko lang. Okay, the first responder should, anong gagawin niya? So, securing and controlling the persons at the scene. So, controlling or identifying and removing persons at the scene and limit, limiting, ito ha, limiting, limiting the number of persons who can enter the crime scene and their movement is an important function of the first responder. Kasi anong unang gagawin niya? Secure the crime scene. So, therefore, hindi lahat pwedeng pumasok dun sa crime scene, sabi nga niya. So, as such, he should identify the persons at the scene and control their movement. 
movements. So the first responder should, sabi niya, control individuals at the scene, prevent individuals from altering or destroying physical evidence by restricting movement, location, and activity while ensuring and maintaining safety at the scene. So while ano gagawin ng first responder? Identify all the individu individuals at the scene such as suspect, Victims control with confession, witnesses secure, or in the bystanders. Lapapasin nyo ba yun sa mga movie again? Yung for example, kahit anak ko yan, tas umiiyak sila, di ba? Tas hindi siya makalapit dun sa mismong crime scene. Bakit? Kasi there is a probability na masira yung crime scene. So kahit ka mag-anak pa niya, hindi yan iaalaw ng mga ano natin, uh, first responder team na makapasok sa crime scene. Naiintindihan nyo na yan kung bakit ganun yung mga ba't hindi siya pinapapasok, ma'am, ba diba? So, yun ang dahilan. So, also, as a first responder, tinitake, niya, tinitake note nila kung sino ba yung mga uh, no, um, tao sa paligid ng mga ng crime scene. Kasi kahit patambay yan or bystanders lang, kahit yung mga nakagichismis lang. Bakit? There is a probability na nandun yung perpetrator. So, manood kayo ng mga movies, ay ng mga series na kanwari, CSI, ganyan, ng mga, Lucifer also, maganda rin siya sa mga ganyan. Kaya nagustuhan ko si Lucifer. Manood kayo ng mga ganyan, tapos magkakaroon kayo ng idea kung paano yung mga investigations na ginagawa nila. Kasi, uh, minsan, yung uh, perpetrator natin, mag-act siya as parang chismoso or parang nakikinood-nood lang siya, ganyan. Pero siya na pala yung suspect. Also, may mga perpetrator tayo na yung offender natin na siya yung magre-report sa police, pero ang totoo siya pala ang gumawa nun. ba diba? So, ayun na kaya nagtitake down no, si first responder kung ano man o sino man ang nadatnan niya doon sa crime scene. Next. Okay, establishing boundaries is a critical aspect in controlling the integrity of ev evidentiary material. So, sabi nga niya, securing the crime scene. Ito na yung paglalagay ng mga plus, uh, police, uh, crime, uh, police crime do not cross. So, sabi, so, sabi natin, establish boundaries of the scene starting at the focal point and extending outwards to include the following. Ito, where the crime occurred. Saan ba ilalagay po yung mga barriers na yan, ma'am? Sabi niya, di ba? Kung saan nangyari ang crime. Where the crime occurred, potential points and paths of entry and exits of the suspect. Kaya nga kung bahay man yan, magsimula pa lang sa pinaka-garahe or kung meron pang space, doon nila ilalagay. So, there, because uh, of the possible of ent and, and, and exits of the suspect. Places where the victim... Evidence may have been moved, okay? So, they they will set up a physical barriers. So, yung mga physical barriers na yan, yun nga yung mga yellow na nakita nyo ganyan, crime scene do not cross, ganyan. Or, minsan kung wala man silang makita, or for example, emergency talaga, wala silang nadalang ganun, minsan kahit tali lang, any type of barrier, basta hindi lang sila makapasok agad doon. So, document the entry. Exit of all people entering and leaving the scenes once the boundaries have been established. So, once na nagkaroon na ng boundary yan, lahat po kaya nang pumapasok doon. Tinitake down note nila. Kahit pa sabi nilang member yan ng, ano, ng responding team, kahit pa sabi natin na member yan ng investigator, investigation team, is tinitake down note nila kung anong oras siya pumunta doon, diba? at uh, sino siya. Kanyan. Anong purpose niya, bakit siya papasok doon sa crime scene na yun. So, in, in, bakit nila gagawin yon To control the flow of personnel. Diba? And even animals entering and leaving the scene to maintain its integrity. Kasi, kailangan nating i-save lagi yung ating crime scene. So, next. Tingnan nyo. Securing the crime scene. Okay. Effect measures to preserve and protect the evidence that may be lost or compromised or contaminated. Bakit natin isa-secure? Kasi kailangan natin nga i-protect yung mga evidences that could be lost or compromised or sometimes makokontaminate kasi siya. So, document the original location of the victim. Kaya yun ang... Uh, or objects that you observe being moved. Uh, ang ginagawa nila dyan is talagang, di ba, dinodrawingan po nila yung nakikita nyo yung chalk. So, yun ang purpose niya kasi i-document po nila yung mga objects and even the person if bago nila kuhanin. So, consider search and seizure issue to determine the necessity of obtaining consent to search and to obtaining search warrant. 
Okay, ito na. Turnover of the scene to the investigator. So, after na ating first uh, responder, lahat ng habang hinihintay niya investigator. So, for example, natapos na niyang nakita yung nangyari. So, na-secure na niya yung scene. Darating talaga yung ating investigator. Kasi minsan, itong mga investigator na to, hindi sila nagre-respond agad or hindi sila kasama dun sa mga first responder. So, what will happen, ang gagawin lang ng ating first responder is to, uh, tawag dito, i-turn over niya. Okay. One of the final tasks of the first responder is to turn over the scene of the crime to the investigators and assisting them in any way possible. So, ang gagawin nun, uh, oh, Captain, ito po talaga yung uh, nangyari. So, lahat ng recorded niya, lahat ng notes niya, ibibigay niya sa ating um, investigator. So, it is the duty of the responding officer to orient the investigator who will be taking over the scene. So, the responding officer upon arrival of the investigator shall turn over the scene to them to his final duty shall be ganito. Ayan. Siyempre, hindi naman nagadagad. O, sir, ito lahat ng notes ko. Ikaw na balang mag magbasa. Alis na ako. Agutom na ako. Pagapon na ako nandyan. Hindi naman pwedeng ganoon, di ba? So, ang gagawin niya? Brave the investigators taking charge of the scene, assist in controlling the scene. Siyempre, kasi siya yung first uh, responder. Turn over the responsibility for the documentation or entry and exits and remain at the scenes until proper properly relieved of duty. Hindi siya pwedeng umalis doon hanggat sa hindi natatapos ang ating investigator. Kasi madaming itatanong tong investigator sa kanya. Unless, di ba? Unless kasama na si investigator na doon pumunta noong ano, tinawag sila. Di ba? Kasi hindi naman agad-agad nga, sabi ko nga, sometimes, hindi naman agad-agad yung mga first responder natin, eh siya na yung investigator. Hindi naman po ganun. So, um, ito. Okay. Ah, ito lang yun din yung kanina. So, the investigate, investigative team composition. So, sayang wala tayo sa school. Papagawa ko to sa inyo eh. So, siguro uh, by midterms or finals, mag-activity na lang din kayo kahit hindi kayo yung sama-sama. So, the investigative composition. Ito. The general composition of an investigation team is ganito. Siyempre, number one, we have the team leader. Okay? Number one yan, we have the team leader. Then, we have the specialist. We have also the photographer, the sketcher, uh, evidence custodian. Ayan, yan, ganyan sila. Ito na, uh, primarily, ito ang, la, ang involvement ng ating investigation team. Team leader, the photographer, sketcher, evidence recorder or recovery personnel or yung custodian natin. And then, uh, specialist. Isa-isay natin ano ba yung mga role ng mga yan. Team leader. Ano bang ginagawa ng team leader, ma? So, sa mga investigation team, team leader, assume control, ensure safety of personnel and security at the scene. So, ensure personnel use appropriate protective equipment and follow the standard recommendations to protect them from any health hazard which may be presented by blood or any other human body fluid. So, ang pinaka merong uh, accountability or responsibility to control the movements of his team is ang ating team leader. So, ina-assume niya na lahat or parang kailangan na uh, chine-check niya muna bago pumunta yung kanyang mga team is kompleto sila ng gamit, uh, equipment, or yung anumang suot nila. So, ang gagawin ni team leader, he will conduct initial walkthrough. So, conduct initial walkthrough for purpose of making a preliminary survey. Hindi pa siya nag investigate dito. So, ang ginagawa lang niya is uh, chine-check niya muna yung pinaka-crime scene. Kaya nga sabi niya, initial walkthrough. So, for purposes of making preliminary preliminary survey, evaluating potential evidence, and preparing a narrative description. After that, okay, after niyang na-examine yung mga nakita niya, nag-ikot-ikot muna siya, he will determine search patterns. Kaya nga sabi ko yung conduct of initial walkthrough, hindi pa yun investigation niya. Ang gagawin niya, kaya lang niya ginawa yun to determine what type of pattern ang gagamitin ng kanyang investigation team. Kasi we have different types of searching patterns. Eh. We have spiral, grid, double grid. So, siguro mga... Sa mga next modules natin, i-discuss natin yan. So... Siya kasi yung magdi-decision. Kasi dahil nakita niya yung mga patterns of evidences, ah, okay, sa gantong area ang gagamitin natin is spiral method. 
Diba? Ang gagamitin naman natin sa gantong area is double grid method, grid method, diba? So, they determine search patterns and make appropriate assignments for team members. Also, designate command post location. So, ang command post location natin, dito nakalagay po ang ating evidence custodian. Ano yun, ma'am? So, for example po, uh, ang crime scene natin is yung office ng crime. Kanwari, pinatay ako doon or kanwari, sinaksak-saksak nila ako doon. So, yun yung ating crime scene. Ngayon, magtatayo sila ng command post. Ano yung command post, ma'am? Yung command post, doon nakalagay lahat ng gamit nila, doon nakalagay yung mga evidence kit nila, and also, doon nakalagay si ating evidence custodian. So, every time na meron silang makokonect, uh, makokollect na evidence, si evidence custodian, siya yung nag-receive noon. So, ang command post lagi is malapit lang siya doon sa crime scene. Hindi siya nakasama agad dun sa crime scene. Okay po? Designate a command post location and ensure exchange of information between search and investigative personnel. Nakakasunod po ba kayo? Nakakasunod? Hi! Yes, ma'am. Okay, continue. So, yun nga, ang gagawin niya, determine search patterns, designate command post, ito pa. He will coordinate with other law enforcement agencies and make sure cooperative spirit is maintained. So, for example, kanwari, nakita niya na yung team niya is kulang. Sometimes, makikipag-coordinate siya sa mga other law enforcement agencies. For example, PNP, magpapatulong sila sa NBI. PNP, magpapatulong sila sa BFP. So, yun yun. So, ensure that sufficient supplies and equipment are available for personnel. Sa accountability pa rin ni team leader yan. Kailangan niyang sinecheck lagi na kompleto ang gamit ng mga ano niya, ng mga katim niya. Control access to the scene and designate an individual to log everyone into the scene. Siyempre, nga, para makontrol lang ating crime scene, lahat ng papasok doon, talagang nakalag muna. So, continuously re-evaluate re efficiency of search during entire course of operation. And release the scene. Okay? Marirelease pa lang po kasi ang crime scene after the final survey. So, sabi ko nga, mauna muna yung initial survey niya. I guess nyo po ba nun? Yung ginawa natin, di ba? Kasi no, anong unang gagawin niya? Initial survey, then investigation, then ang mag-release po ng final survey si ating team leader. Ang final survey nun, ibig sabihin, tapos na talaga silang mag-investigate. Next, okay na tayo kay team leader. So, one day siguro, one of you magiging team leader ng isang investigation team. So, next, let's go with the photographer. Ito, mas gusto ko gato ang trabaho eh. So, Sayang wala kayong forensic photography. So, nadi-discuss din kasi ito sa forensic photography. Actually, ang forensic photography nyo, yung Force 2111, available siya dapat ng first sem. But because of this online class tayo, hindi natin magagamit ang lab, kaya nilipat namin siya ng second sem. So, pang second year talaga yon Second year, first sem. And ako yung nagtuturo ng photography diyan sa Pampanga. So, photography, the photographer. So, anong ginagawa nito, ma'am? So, ang gagawin ni photographer, okay, one of his responsibilities is to photograph entire area before it is entered. Bago makapasok si team leader, bago makapasok kung sino man yan, si photographer po, H.I.E., Pipicture niya muna lahat. So, photo photograph victims, crowd, and vehicles, pati yung mga sa nasa vicinity. Ma'am, bakit ganun? Di ba, meron na nang-take down notes kung sino yung mga kung sino yung mga tao na yon, kung sino man yung mga ganun. Bakit kailangan pa ng photographer? but kailangan pa niyang i-photograph ang victim, crowd, and also the vehicles around? Kasi, di ba, uh, photography or the image or mismong photograph is the best uh, preservation of evidence. Bakit ma'am best preservation 'yon? Kasi it could not it cannot be manipulated. Hindi ka tulad kapag sulat, pwede mong idagdag 'yan. 'Di ba? Pero kung photograph ang ginamit nila, syempre alang-alang mag-photoshop pa sila para i-edit 'yon. So, sabi nga natin, photograph are the best way to preserve the evidence. So, for example, merong decaying uh, something doon, decaying animal. So, In order for us to preserve that kind of evidence, eh, di-pricturean mo na. Kasi, more, the more or less, or kapag habang tumatagal, lalo na kung nabubulok yung mga evidence natin, eh, masisira yung formation niya. 
So next, photograph entire scene with overall, medium, and close-up coverage using measurement scale and when, when appropriate. So meron kasing different types of ano eh, um, uh, photography. Uh, I mean, uh, forms. Minsan, overall, kabuuan ng crime scene, medium, close-up for, for the specific evidence. For, so for the close-up evidences or close-up photographs, minsan gumagamit sila ng scale, measurement scale. So for example, merong silang weapon na nakita na kutsilyo. So gagawin niya, bago niya picture niya, lalagyan niya ng ruler yan. Bakit ma'am? Para makita, okay? Makita natin ano yung actual size niya doon sa photograph. Kasi di ba, when we use naman kasi photograph, hindi natin malaman yung actual size niya. Pero nga sa mga picture, nagmumukha matangkad kahit maliit lang, di ba? So, ang ginagawa nila, nilalagyan po nila ng measurement or ruler. So, photograph major evidence items before they are moved. Ang photographer, ganito ang rule niya. Siya, siya muna ang nauna sa lahat. Yung parang bago kasi alisin na lahat ng evidences, bago galawin lahat yan, kailangan mapicturean muna yan ng ating photographer. Kasi nga, this is the best way to preserve the evidence. Diba? So again, the photograph major evidence items before they are moved, coordinate this effort with sketch preparer, evidence recorder, and evidence recovery personnel. So photograph all Latin fingerprints. Mam, ano ba yung Latin fingerprints? When you encounter the word Latin, it means it is not visible in the human eye. Okay, again, for example, hinawakan ko tong phone ko. Hinawakan ko tong phone ko. So, ganyan. Meron niyang Latin fingerprints. It is visible to your human eye? Hindi. Paano lang natin ito mapavisible kapag gumamit sila ng another techniques? Diba? Tapos, pipicturean nila yon. Yung mga Latin fingerprints, usually yan yung mga uh, fingerprints na napupunta sa mga different objects na hindi natin nakita. Masasabi mo palang kasi na visible sa ang fingerprint sa human eye if, for example, nag, meron niyang ano, marka. For example, meron ka munang sigurong, ano yon yung ginagamit natin kapag bumaboto, ink. ba diba? Tapos nilagay mong ganyan. Then, yun. Uh, pwede yun. Pero yung mga ganong klaseng evidences, yung mga latent fingerprints, talagang pinipicturean yan. Kasi one day or habang tumatagal, there's a possibility na ano mangyari? Masira or maagad ma-destroy yung ating ano or mabura, di ba? Yung mga fingerprints na yan. So, another impression of evidence before lifting and casting are accomplished. So, for example, ayan, di ba? Meron tayong latent fingerprint dito sa aking phone. So, ang mangyayari, bago nila kuhanin yung ano, yung fingerprint mismo sa phone ko, so, ang mangyayari is uh, pipicturean niya muna saan nakalagay yung mismong fingerprint. Kung saan yung uh, location niya. Nakakasunod ba kayo? Ha? Do you follow? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So, next. Photograph. Okay, next naman tayo. Prepare photographic log and photographic sketch. Isa din sa ginagawa ng ating uh, photographer is they are preparing the photographic log and photographic sketch. Kasi hindi naman uh, anong oras niya pinisiran yun. Lahat yan pagkakasunod-sunod. Meron din photographic log. Next is sketcher. Sino ba yung mga marunong mag-drawing dito? Pero pag sketcher ka, it doesn't mean na kailangan marunong ka mag-drawing. Pag sinabi sketcher ka, it means kailangan kailangan mo lang uh, magawa yung uh, parang kung si photographer pinicture niya yung buong location. Ganyan. Ikaw ay sketcher, parang may establish mo lang yung mga proper locations ng mga evidences. Diba? Sketcher. Ang gagawin niya is a diagram, immediate area, diagram, immediate area of the scene, and orient diagram with sketch. So, set forth major items of evidence on sketch. And then, designate and label areas to search and advise team leader and all other search members of nomenclature for designated areas. Areas, excuse me. And then, obtain appropriate assistance for taking measurements and double-check the measurements. Also, to ensure necessary administrative information such as scale, disclaimer, is recorded on sketch. Bakit kailangan ng sketch, ma'am, kung meron naman overall photograph? Again po, sa photograph, hindi natin nakikita yung actual size ng isang object. So, ang purpose po ng sketcher, ha, is to establish and to locate the proper 
uh, location of evidences and to tell us kung gaano ba kalaki yun. Kung uh, ano, gaano yung distance niya. Just to locate. Yun talaga ang purpose ng sketch. For the proper documentation of the objects in the crime scene. So, maglalagay siya dyan yung pinto, ganito kahaba. So, yung maglalagay siya dyan, yung nakita niyang uh, uh, crime weapon as ang distance niya dun sa victim is ganito yung distance niya, mga 6 cm or 6 meters. So, ganun yun. Yun ang, uh, um, yun ang reason bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, sketcher is to establish the distances, yan, the locations, the proper locations of the crime scene. Ano man yung nakita sa crime scene. Next, we have evidence recorder or recovery personnel or also the evidence custodian. Ano ginagawa nito? So, evidence recorder, ayan, have a significant evidence photograph before collection. Ang ginagawa niya, bago kuha rin yung mismong ating uh, evidence, kailangan na photograph nga muna yan. So, they will describe evidence and its location on a parade, bag, or envelope. For example, oh, napicture na po ni photographer, ma, merong crime weapon. Tapos na, nalagay niya, na, na, din, na din niya po yung mismong, uh, uh, with yung measurement, ganyan. Ang gagawin ni evidence recorder, bago kuhanin yon is nakita niya ng gantong oras, kinuha niya ng gantong oras, i-record niya yan. Uh, tapos, ang distance niya mula sa ganto mula kay victim is ganto So, lahat. So, describe evidence and its location on appropriate bag or envelope. So, kapag nilagay na niya sa evidence yan, lahat ng kung saan nakita yung evidence na yun, kung paano niya nakita, ilalagay yung description sa evidence. So, sign and date evidence container maintain a chain of custody. So, dahil, for example, ang ating evidence recorder is si Bustos, ang gagawin niya, so, i-explain niya, okay, ito po yung, um, ito yung mismong, um, evidence. So, nandito yung description ng evidence kung saan, kung paano niya nakuha, saan niya nakita. And then, magkakaroon siya ng ano, uh, signature over printed name. Bakit? Para malaman yung chain of custody. Mamano yung chain of custody? Siyempre, ang chain of custody kasi, mahalaga yan sa ating mga evidences. Lalo na kung saan napasa-pasa yung mga evidences. So, siya yung unang nag-collect. Therefore, tapat meron siya noon. Next, appropriate collect and package evidence to maximize evidence integrity and maintain the evidence log. Always po nakalag yan. Kung sinong kumuha, sinong nagbigay. Yan. So, use appropriate protective equipment. Ayan, hindi naman basta-basta, di ba, kumukuha lang sila ng, in, or nagko-collect sila ng in, uh, evidence. Ano ginagawa nila? Nag-glove sila. nag uh, they use uh, protective equipment methods for dealing with potentially infective evidence like the blood. So, for example, lalo na ngayon, di ba, di natin alam baka yung infection. O, kanwari sa mga movie na napapanood nyo, di ba, bago sila mag-collect ng blood, talagang nakasuit muna sila para silang mga astronaut kasi baka infectious yun or infective eh. Next, we have the specialist. So, another team of the investigative team is yung specialist. Hindi po yung mga special child, ha? katulad nyo. Hindi, ha? Specialist lang. So, ano yung mga specialist na to? So, it is sometimes necessary to bring in expertise from an outside agency. So, the field of forensic science. Yung mga nasa crime lab na to. Alam nyo yung mga... Kaya nga, di ba, meron tayong forensic, uh, Bachelor of Science in Forensic Science. Uh, ano yun? Yung course nating isa, BFS, di ba? Bachelor of Forensic Science. So, ito, so broad today that no agency will have every form of specialty service available from among its ranks. So, typically, specialists are brought in from industry, the academic community, private and scientific laboratories, and similar concerns. Ang mga specialists, um, sila yung, for example, expertise. Uh, ma'am, ang nakita naming evidences kasi it contains uh, liquids, ma'am, na hindi namin ma-identify. So, minsan tatawag sila ng forensic chemist. So, yung forensic chemist siya yung mag-validate ng mga ganung klaseng evidences. Yun ang tinatawag nating specialist. Okay po? So, ibig sabihin, syempre ikaw, kung criminologist ka, malay mo bang mag-examine ng mga ganung klaseng mga liquids, ba? So, nagtatawag tayo ng other uh, specialist. So, it is sometimes, sabi nga niya, 
Ito, when dealing with outside specialists, some pertinent aspects to consider are, so these are, the competence and reliability of the specialist. Baka naman kumuha ka ng forensic chemist sa ibang agency, tapos boplax naman pala. So, kailangan yung mapagkakatiwalaan. Next, the ability of the specialist to work at scene within law enforcement guidelines. Kailangan yung specialist natin yan is uh, kaya niyang mag... Uh, mag trabaho with the law enforcement law enforcers so the role of the specialist in presenting expert testimony in court also may role itong mga specialist ito bakit natin kumukuha tayo sa outside specialist syempre dahil siya yung nag-examine ng evidence na yan dahil siya yung naganto ganyan ang gagawin niya is magte-testify kasi siya sa court para maputanayan yung evidence na collect mo is ganto ganyan or another uh, for example kumuha ka ng specialist yung psycholo psychologist para mapatunayan na baliw nga yung isang tao o yung yung nagano na yung nag ano sa nag viral ngayon sa FB yung sabi ng sweet by the psycho ba yun sino kasi yon ah, kanino yon ah, kanino yon ah, sino yung babae yon yung pinatay daw niya yung nanay niya so yun guma gumamit yun ng specialist yun yung ginamit nila yung psychologist syempre paano mapapatunayan na pulis na baliw siya if hindi sila gagamit ng specialist Nakaka, ano ba kayo? Nakakasunod? Yes. Are you yes, sure? Pa. Yes, pa. Okay. So, yes, yun na. Yun ang ating investigation team. Okay na tayo. So, sayang nga, wala tayo sa school. Pero, maybe next or ne, next mga next modules natin sa mga siguro mga by midterms magkakaroon tayo ng actual mag-isip kami ng paraan para magkaroon naman kayo ng ganyang classing team kahit nasa bahay kayo so the tools of investigation again what are the three eyes nga what are the three eyes again na discuss na to kahapon what are the three eyes Information. Information. Sige. Interrogation. Interview and interrogation. Okay. So, these are the three eyes of okay. investigation or the tools of investigation. We have information, interview and interrogation, and the instrumentation. So, let's start with information. So, information, these are the data that the investigator needs in order to solve the puzzle. So, ito yung mga facts na kailangan niya. So, this data may come from public and private documents, the modus operandi files, statements of the victim, suspect, and witness, and the physical evidence that were recovered at the crime scene. Yung mga information na yan, magagather niya dun sa mga taong involved sa crime scene, witness man yan, victim man yan, or suspect, and also kung hindi man siya testimonies, it could be uh, information coming from the physical evidences, kung ano man ang nakita niya. So, sources of information. We have persons, di ba? Sources of information. People who can provide their statements about the incident or crime are valuable source of information. So, this may be the victim, witness, and even the suspect and informants. Mama, ano po ang pinagkaiba ng informants sa victim, witness, and suspect? Sometimes, okay, informants or tinatawag nating informer, ito yung mga bayaran, binabayaran natin para in exchange of an information. Actually, ang pinaka-form talaga or tawag sa mga uh, binabayaran na informants natin ay informer. So, for example, oh, ititip ko sa'yo kung nasan si ganito. In exchange, babayaran mo siya. So, another source of information yun. Usually, ang tawag po talaga, ang proper dun sa mga bayaran na yun is informer. Pero, nakaklassify sila under inform months. Yung mga informants kasi na to, dalawa kasi yan, informants and informer. Informants, yung nagbibigay sila ng mga information without exchange of money. Pero kapag kanungwari, um, nagbigay sila ng information in exchange of money, that, ang tawag sa kanila ay informer. Okay po tayo doon. Please take note of that. So, informants, sabi nga niya, these are the individuals who can provide information but does not fall under the category of victim, witness, or suspect. Hindi siya, ano siya, ah, hindi siya involved dyan. Hindi siya victim, hindi siya witness, hindi siya suspect. So, parang pinagtatanungan mo lang siya, kilala mo ba si ganito? Oh. So, the motive of the informants in providing information varies. Some may provide information as their social obligation, kasi trabaho nila yon. Some may probate, provide information in exchange of nga yan, promise or reward, or yung pera, di ba? And some are motivated by greed or revenge. So, for example, hmm, sakto, nahuli si ganito. For example, magkaaway si Arcelia at si Lacson. 
Ngayon si Lacson na balitaan niya nakakomit ng crime. Eh wala namang in, uh, involvement si Arcelia doon sa ginawang uh, crime ni Lacson. Eh galit na galit siya kay Lacson. So nung ano uh, naglakas siya ng loob, na- nalaman niya kung saan nagtatago si Lacson. So kahit hindi siya victim, hindi siya witness, 'di ba? Or hindi siya suspect. Ang ginawa niya, tinip niya sa mga pulis. Itong si Lacson. So, ang tawag sa kanya, informant. So, kaya siya nagbigay ng information, it is because he is motivated by greed or revenge. For example, di gusto niyang maghigante. Sabi niya, syempre, ayoko naman ng paghiganti ko mapa, na, na parang wala lang. Bibigyan ko, bibigay, magbibigay din ako ng uh, tip sa polis na bibigay ko yung location niya in exchange of money. So, ang tawag doon, informer naman na siya. Mamay na lang po Yes, what is your question? Uh, kapag po nagbabayad sila sa informer, yung budget po, saan po nang gagaling yun? Sa mismong investigation team din. Ah, okay, thank you po. Kasi nakano naman yan, parang reimbursement lahat ng gagamitin nila. Next. Ito, meron din tayong tinatawag na confidential informant. Yung mga ayaw magpakilala. For example, si Eric Ar- si Jerry Carcilla. Ayaw niyang, syempre, baka balikan siya ni Lacson eh. Diba? So, meron tayong confidential informant. These are those formally registered and compensated by police department for supplying information or performing a service. They act as the eyes and ears for the detective who substitute the police in places where police cannot go. So, ito yung mga asset nila. Yan yung mga confidential informant. Again, yan yung mga asset. So, ito, types of informants as recognized by the courts. So, generally, there are three types of informants the court has identified to it. So, number one, we have identified citizen informant. These are considered as the most reliable and is highly credited by the courts. Again, identified citizen informant. So, sila yung pinaka-considered as the most reliable and highly credited. Next, we also have the known informa- informants from the criminal world who previously provided reliable tips. So, these are the criminals naman, for, from underworld naman. So, these are the criminals who have established their relationship with the law enforcement, who have provided reliable information, and they are willing to cooperate because of their tips. So, law enforcement tends to value them. And, ayan. Ito tayo. Balik tayo, no? Dito. Naaalala nyo yung sa history natin. Naaalala nyo si Eugene Francois Vidoc? Opo. Anong ginawa ni Eugene? Anong ginawa niya? Di ba dating criminal si Eugene? Tama ba siya ba yun? Opo, ma'am. Tapos, di ba? Tapos naging, Opo, uh, naging asset siya. Okay. Tapos, nung naging na siya yung pinakahead ng isang police, uh, law, nung isang law enforcement, anong ginawa niya? Hinar niya yung kapwa niya dating criminal. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Diba? Yes, mo. Oh, yun. Yes, so, yun. Yun yung ka-example na to. Known informants from the criminal world who previously provided reliable tips. Nag-guess na niyan. So, yan din yan. And last one, we have those anonymous informant. Yung ayaw magpakilala. Alam mo yung mga tipong napapanood nyo sa movies na nagbibigay lang ng papel. Na ayaw magpakilala. O may tip sila sa inyo. Nag-iwan sila ng papel. Ganun lang. So, anonymous informant. So, these are the, re- the least reliable among the three. Least reliable. Kasi hindi nga natin known hindi known ang identity niya. Hindi natin alam if, ma- if mapagkakatiwalaan natin yung binigay niyang information since hindi natin siya kilala. ba? Diba? So, the anonymous informant uh, is considered as the least reliable among the three. A tip from an ino- anonymous informant is not sufficient to justify legal action. So, when a tip lacks an indicia of reliability, further investigation is necessary. Siyempre, kailangan mo munang i-validate if tama ba yung binibigyan niya. In other words, if the information was relayed by an anonymous informant to an duty on-duty police office, an investigatory stop will only proceed after the officer has confirmed the tip by visual observation that confirms it. So, parang, di ba, bago nila, kasi mahirap mag-rely dun sa an- anonymous na yan. Kasi malay mo, yung binigay nilang information na yan, is baka para malito lang yung investigation nila. 
'di ba? Or baka mas lalo lang tumagal yung investigation nila. Kaya nga sabi na hindi sila agad-agad magre-rely nila. Ang ginagawa nila is uh, bago sila mag-proceed doon, eh, yung officer kailangan mo niyang i-confirm 'yon by visual observation. Suspect as source of information, who is suspect again? Sige nga, if you could remember from our CLO 112 Introduction to Criminal Justice. Hi. Ah, sige nga. Ano yung who is suspect? Kailan nagiging suspect? Kapag... Sige nga. Sino yung suspect? A suspect is someone who is directly or indirectly involved in the commission of crime. Sino to? Diba ito yung mga pinaghihinalaan pa lang ng mga police kapag nasa law enforcement pa lang. Diba ang tawag natin dun sa mga offender na yan is suspect muna kapag nasa law enforcement. Nakakalimutan nyo natin mga nomenclature. Diba kapag law enforcement ang tawag sa kanya is suspect, pag napunta sa prosecution ang tawag sa kanya respondent, de ba? Kapag napunta na siya sa court, ang tawag sa kanya ay accused. And then, kapag nasa kulungan na, ang tawag sa kanya ay convict or criminal. Hmm, naalala nyo na. So, a suspect is someone who is directly or indirectly involved in the, in the commission of a crime. So, the motive and intent of the suspect. So, the motive is the moving power which impels to action for a definite result. Parang palik lang tayo sa triangular of crime. So, di ba, The motive, ito yung pinakarason. Why does a suspect or why does an offender com will commit a crime? Sabi nga niya, it is the moving power. Next, we also have the in, uh, motive and intent. Intent is the purpose to use a particular means to effect such result in the popular mind. Ano bubo ang pinagkaiba ng motive and intent? Motive. Ano pinagkaiba ng motive and intent? Magkaiba yan eh. Sabi dito, motive, moving power. Motibo. How about intent? The purpose to use a particular means. Ganto. Ang motive, for example, motive mo, gusto mo uh, tumaas ang grades mo. So, may motive ka talaga na gusto mong tumaas ang, ang grades mo. Kapag yung motive na yan is na go deeper, And nag uh, nagisip ka na ng or gumawa ka na ng paraan that is intent. Sabi nga niya, use a particular means to effect such result in the popular mind. Yung nasa utak mo, that is your motive na. Gusto kong gusto ko pong tumaas ang grade, gusto kong pumasa. Pero kapag gumamit ka na, for example, nag nag-formulate ka na sa utak mo na ang gagamitin kong uh, paraan para tumaas ang pasa ko is magchichit ako. So, yun ang nasa intent. That is intent. Ibig sabihin, you are using um, particular means to uh, to ay, tawag nyo, to extract or para magawa mo yung motive mo. Nag-guess nyo na po ba yan? Ang pinagkaiba ng motive and intent? So, next. So, sabi nga niya, motive is a moving power. So, in criminal investigation, the probable reason a person committed a crime such as jealousy, greed, revenge, or part of a theft. Intent, sabi nga niya, the purpose of using of particular means in such effect to result in a popular mind. So, in criminal law, the concept of criminal intent has been called mens rea. What is mens rea? Which refers to criminal or wrongful person. If a person innocently caused harm and when then she or he lacks mens rea under this concept should not criminally prosecuted. For example, uh, accidentally napatay mo yung ano uh, napatay mo yung nanay mo. Kapag sabi nga niya sa criminal law naglalak itong intention na to, what will happen? Therefore, he should not be criminally prosecuted. Kasi wala naman siyang intention na patayin siya. For example, sa self-defense. ba? Diba? Napatay mo yung taong sumasaksak sa'yo. Bakit? Wala kang intention na patayin siya. Ang gusto mo lang is ma-save yung sarili mo. So, sa criminal law, sabi nga niya, if there is no intention, okay, there, uh, kahit nagawa yung klat, isang, isang crime, therefore, kailangan hindi ka maging criminal prosecuted. Okay po. Next. Modus operandi. What is modus operandi? 
So, the method of a criminal in their commission of a crime will establish the identity of a suspect. Modus operandi, this is the methods of their operation. Diba, kanwari, merong martilyo gang, gumagamit ng martilyo pa para makanakaw. So, yun yung mga tinatawag nating modus operandi or MO. Next, the victim as source of information. The victim is also a witness that can provide additional information as to who might have the reason to commit a crime against him. He might speculate why was he chosen as a victim. Kaya nga meron tayo, meron, meron kayo subject na human behavior and victimology kasi merong role itong victim na to. Kasi uh, lalo na sa pag uh, para sa ating successful investigation. Actually, ang, ang mas madaling nang uh, mas madaling mas madaling isolve ang crime if nandiyan yung victim, if buhay ang victim. Kasi syempre, siya yung pinaka, ano eh, victim eh, siya yung pinaka may alam sino ang gumawa nun. So, syempre, matatanong natin, ano ba sa tingin mo ang magiging motibo? Bakit nila gagawin yun sa'yo? At saka, ano ba yung mga ginawa mo this past para gawin nila yun sa'yo? So, yun yung mga tinatanong natin sa victim eh. Next naman, the witness as source of information. A witness is someone who have observed the commission of a crime. Witness, yung nakakita nga. So, it may be visual, observation, auditory, observation, or with the sense of smell, the use of his five senses can provide useful information to the investigator. Para maging witness ka, syempre gagamitin mo yung five senses mo. It's either nakita mo, it's either may narinig ka, it's either may naamoy ka, it's either may nahawakan ka, ano pa ba, or it's either may natikman ka. For example, sa restaurant, ganyan. So, that is a witness. Next, Suspect as source of information. Ito. Konti na lang, ano? Konti na lang. Mga, konting tease pa. Boy pa ba kayo? Mga six slides. Okay, last Boy, na lang. Papa. Okay, kaya pa Five ito. Lights. Okay. So, confession and admission. A confession as distinguished from admission. Na, 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 ano ko na to? Na, na explain ko na to sa klonyo. What is the difference between confession and admission? Sige nga, anyone? Kapag sinabi nating confession, a declaration made at any time by a person voluntarily without compassion or inducement, stating, acknowledging he had committed. How about admission? Diba? In other hand, so it is usually implied, applied in criminal cases to statements of fact by the accused which do not directly involve acknowledgement of the guilt or the accused. Diba? Naalala nyo yung ang example ko pa nga dito, confession and admission. For example, confession. Babe, sorry talagang pumunta ako sa, ano eh, sa beer house. Okay? Sa beer house, kasama ko si ganito, nag-inuman kami. Kapag sinabi niya lahat, tarang nag ina niya, that is confession. That is voluntarily. How about admission? For example, but, uh, but late kang umuwi, siguro ng babae ka, no? Pag sinabi niya, um, pumunta lang ako sa beer house. That is admission. Di ba, hindi naman niya dinirectly sinabi niya ng babae siya. Sinabi lang niya, pumunta lang ako ng beer house. Nakita yung pinagkaiba ng confession and admission. Ang confession, directly kukwento niya lahat, i-admit niya lahat ano yung nangyari. Ang admission, mag, parang mag-admit lang siya, oo, pero hindi niya sasabihin lahat ng details. At hindi niya parang i-involve na yung guilt siya doon sa ginawa niya. Pumunta lang ako ng beer house. Nag-gets niyo ba? If na-recall nyo yung aking discussion ng kulo. Okay. So, what is a crime scene naman? So, a crime scene encompasses all areas where the criminal victim and the witnesses move during the commission of a crime. So, ito na yan kung saan yung pinaka-vicinity or saan nangyayari ang crime mismo. So, the crime scene yields physical evidence such as tools used, tool marks, fingerprints, shoe prints, blood splatter, spent bullets, and fire cartridges. So, next, ito naman, interview and interrogation. So, ito na lang. Ano pinagkaiba ulit ng interview interrogation? As I've discussed kahapon, kapag interview, this is just a simple questioning of the person. Kapag interrogation, it means a systematic and skillful questioning. Ibig sabihin, we are using some techniques in order to extract an information coming from them. So, for example, out kami ni John, uh, si Jeric at saka, iba naman, so Ibay at saka si DC Kambao. O, tapos ang suspect, ang gusto nilang makuha ng information, si Ligon, ang gagawin ni Clarice, eh, ang gagawin natin, Matt and Jeff. Ang Matt and Jeff, uh, interrogation, ganito siya. Katwana si Matt, 
siya yung magtapanggap na mabait, si Jeff naman, siya yung magpapanggap na mabait. So, kapag nag-i-interview nun sila, or nag i sila, yung isa, yung mat, ang gagawin niya, kanwari parang kinakampihan niya sa ligon, mabait siya. Yung isa naman, yung Jeff, siya yung mag a na parang galit na galit na parang gusto niya patayin sa ligon. Hanggang sa, parang ba diba, yung isa sumusulsol, yung isa nananakot. Hanggang sa magsasalita yun. So, gumagawa sila ng ibang techniques. That is interrogation. And last one is remuneration. Alam niyo na to. The use of scientific tools in detecting crime. The use of laboratory equipment. For example, yung mga paggamit na natin ng criminalistics or the applied sciences in order for us to establish or to determine or to identify a specific evidence. So, yun lamang po ang ating discussion about this ano, uh, course unit 3 part 2. So, do you have... Uh,